Hi, I'm Cody and I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I'm filming on, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Hi subscribers, it's your boy Toby here and I promise to never begin a video like this again. Um, today I'll be baking some bread and I'll hopefully get you to understand a bit of why I enjoy and I like making bread so much. The recipe that I'll be using is very easy, but it still takes about three or four hours of time. Now don't worry, it's not going to be doing stuff for most of that time, most of the time it's just waiting, but you do kind of need to be around to do stuff now and again for that time. So the first step of this recipe will be taking 315 mils of lukewarm water. And to this water, we'll be adding three and a half grams of dried yeast. And now we wait. So after it's been a few minutes, it'll look something like this. We'll be then taking 500 grams of flour and a teaspoon of salt. Then we'll just give it a little bit of a mix. It doesn't have to be too thorough. and then we'll add the water and the yeast. With clean hands, we'll then go and give it a little bit of a mix around. Just to kind of get it mostly together. So now that we've washed that sticky dough off our hands, we'll be flouring the veg. So we'll want to make just a very thin layer of flour so that it doesn't stick, and then we'll be actually kneading the dough, which is the part of bread making that everyone knows. A little bit of flour, not too much, and then on it goes. So, now we've got this, we just need to knead it. And it doesn't really matter what technique you use, there's a whole bunch of different techniques. I'm just going to be doing a pretty basic thing that has worked for me in the past, so I kind of just push into it and then fold it over itself. Push into it and fold over itself. So we'll be doing this for about five minutes. Uh, if it gets a bit, little bit too sticky, you can always add a little bit of extra flour. But generally, as you knead it, it also does start to become less sticky. So you'll want to watch out for if it's sticking to your hands, then you'll add a little bit more flour. So it needs to be a little bit smoother, like when you start it's just all in these huge clumps. But then as you knead and you knead and you knead, it starts to have a much smoother, much softer, much more elastic te uh, texture. This would be a lot easier with an electric mixer by the way. You can see now it's much smoother, much more all together than it was when it started. So you're looking for a texture a lot like this. So once we've got this, we'll need to just put it into a bowl. I'll reuse this one after cleaning it. And then we'll just want to cover it with a damp tea towel and leave it for an hour, hour and a half until it doubles in size. Now, if I was to go to the supermarket and buy a loaf of bread, I'd be paying at least $1 for maybe the super cheapest bread that you can get. Like, you can easily spend $4 on more on a loaf of bread. 
Now for this loaf that we're making now, depending on what flour you get, you could be paying as little as 50 cents for an entire and very delicious loaf of bread. So this is one of the many reasons that I love making bread. So it's been an hour and a half and you can see that it's well doubled in size. So what we want to do is we want to get a little bit of flour, add it to the bench. And now we're just going to knead for another 30 seconds, which will knock just a little bit of that air out of it and give us a little bit more time to develop the flavours that come with bread. So that should be enough. So now we've got the dough and what I'm wanting to do is I want to shape it a little bit. So this will take it from this kind of lumpy mess to a little bit nicer, a little bit more presentable. So what I'll be doing is I'll go and fold it in half and then kind of squeeze it so that one side of it stretches out a little bit. Now there's much better ways to shape a loaf but I don't like to put in a lot of effort and I've found that this is really good value for effort. So once you've kind of got it like that, we can do a bit of this. Now you can see it's a nice little round ball and we can put it in here. I've got a flowered tea towel just sitting in a colander. You can put that in there, a little bit more flour and then fold it up. And another half hour, an hour, until it doubles in size again. Another great part of making your own bread is that you can choose exactly where all of the ingredients come from. So for me, I like to buy in bulk and uh, buy Australian flour, buy local. You can do really whatever you want. Um, there is even people who make their own flour to make their own bread. So you can really choose whatever you want for the ingredients, which means that you can make it as ethical or as environmentally friendly as you want. So it's been another 45 minutes and you can come and have a look at the bread. And you can see that it's a lot bigger than when I put there. So now what we'll do is we'll get the bread, get some baking paper, flip it over. comes, there we go, over to the oven, and before we put it in, some scissors and we'll score the top. Some people do this with an actual um, tool for this, some people do it with a sharp knife, I find scissors are best when you actually don't have any sharp knives in the house because you live in a share house. There we go, so I've scored the top, and in the oven it goes. So I'll be baking this at 180 degrees for a bit over half an hour. So it's been 35 minutes now, so it's time for my favourite bit, which is getting the bread out of the oven. And you can see it's absolutely gorgeous, it exploded a little bit, tore apart, but that just makes it more delicious. Um, some people say that you should wait like an hour or two for the bread to cool, but honestly, like fresh bread straight out of the oven is like the way to do it. But like wait 10 minutes so that you don't burn your hands cutting it.